Thank you for tuning into our devotional series on the last words of Christ. My name is Glennis Sherrard and I'm honored to share one of Christ's last words on the cross as recorded in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, verse 30, which in the Greek language reads, Tetelestai, or it is finished in the English language. How many of you know that you can't finish something that wasn't started? And I believe that is what makes these words so powerful, is that they represent the culmination, the completion, the end of something God started and therefore something only he could complete or finish, or as Christ said, to tell us die. So often we start things in our lives, but, we, but then we don't finish them. We don't persevere. We don't sacrifice. We don't prioritize. And so we give up and we give in to other distractions, to the easy way out or to the opinions of other people. And so to fully understand the power of this word, to tell us die, we have to know the beginning and where best to begin than in the book of Genesis. As many of you know, the book of Genesis begins with the story of creation and how within six days, God systematically meticulously, intentionally, and wonderfully created a perfect world, a paradise in which nothing died and everything coexisted and thrived in peace and harmony. None of God's living creatures had to fear being killed by one another because we were all primarily plant eaters in paradise. Yes, let me say that again. God created all of his living creatures to eat plants and seed-bearing fruits, from the birds to the fish, to the lions, the tigers and bears, and yes, humankind. And so Adam and Eve did not have to fear the dinosaurs, nor did sheep have to fear lions because we lived in perfect harmony with one another in paradise. However, when Adam and Eve were deceived by Satan through the serpent in the Garden of Eden, sin and disobedience were introduced into the world and everything changed. In paradise, Adam and Eve were both naked and were not ashamed. But when sin came on the scene, they now hid from God in disgrace because of their nakedness, because they were filled with guilt and shame. In paradise, harmony and one oneness existed amongst all of God's creatures but sin opened the door to fear and death that would usurp the peace they had once known. Genesis 3 and 7 tells us that Adam and Eve clothed themselves with fig leaves to hide their nakedness. But we later learn in Genesis 3 and 21 that before God banished them from the Garden of Eden, he clothed them in garments of animal skin. This was the first atoning sacrifice for the wages of sin. Romans 6 and 23 tells us, for the wages of sin is death. And Hebrews 9 and 22 says that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Because we serve a God who is full of justice, the debt of sin must be paid. It cannot go unpunished. A life has to die. But because we serve a God who is equally full of love and mercy, he made a way for us out of our sin predicament. God established in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve the system of atonement in which the life of an innocent and unblemished clean animal would be sacrificed to satisfy our sin debt. Thus began the annual custom and ritual of animal sacrifice to God for the forgiveness of sin. While this imperfect and temporary system endured for thousands of years, its main purpose was to foreshadow the perfect and permanent sacrifice that would come to defeat death and sin once and for all. And that was in the person of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world. And so when Jesus proclaimed to tell us die on the cross, it is finished. He declared victory for all who put their faith and
and trust in him. What has God started in you that remains unfinished? I encourage you to persevere, to stay the course, so you too can say to tell us die, as Jesus said on the cross. Let us pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for tuning in to our devotional series. God bless you.